Hello, welcome back to Dial H for Hero Clicks. This is episode 318. We're going to be talking about the new Fantastic Four previews from comicbook.com and two clicks from KO, as well as the Black Widow spoils from the Taiwanese Hero Clicks Facebook page. Uh, I'm your sexy branch chain co host, Calder Ness. Howdy, howdy, let's get rowdy. <laughs> As always, Dial H for Hero Clicks is brought to you by CoolStuffInc.com, where you can find cool stuff in stock every day, including all the latest Hero Clicks singles and sealed products. Make sure you check them out at CoolStuffInc.com. Use code DIAL5, D-I-A-L, number 5, for 5% off your Cool Stuff Inc. order. It's great if you're just starting to shop CoolStuffInc.com. Don't have any discounts built up yet. Go ahead and use our awesome discount, especially when you pre-order the new Fantastic Four set, which is for pre-order right now at CoolStuffInc.com. Like always, I am joined in my studio by my nemesis, Simeon Bruce. What's going on, Simeon? Ooh, I'm up to 8% on singles. So, yeah. Good job. One of these days, I'll get hard to work. 15, that oh, magical baby. 15%. Uh, I believe I'm at they'll, 12. They'll be like, right we now. have to pay you for hero clicks now. <laughs> be like, yeah, give me those and then pay me, because that's how the world works. I'm not insane. It it sure doesn't, but uh, close. No, you're not close at all. I'm sorry. Uh, but uh, like always, we like to start off with what made us happy this week. Simeon, what have you got, my man? What made me happy this week, it's kind of like sad because it's five years down the line. But uh, oh. Fallout 4, I'm finally playing it. Uh, I upgraded from a, P- a PS3. I now have a PC that can play games that have come out in the last five years apparently um at least maybe maybe games that came out more recently if i ever decide to spend the money but uh it's a fun game um so there's like there's a lot different than fallout 3 and even new vegas which came out slightly later but was mostly just like a giant dlc package uh yeah like you you build little shelters and stuff i don't think it helps you at all but i can do it so it's like a weird version of The Sims where I also murder people. So mm. it's just like The Sims. Okay. Because I, I do that in both <laughs> games. So uh. that made me happy. <laughs> no, it, it really is kind of fun. Um, for anyone that's like played the Fallout series, I'm sure that they're aware of Fallout 4. And I'm coming in very late to the game. But it is like a, it's a much different game than the previous two entries to the title. And it is kind of cool, just like the the new scenery and like the different graphics that they you know updated in the last ten years, I guess, since Fallout New Vegas. And uh, the enemies, like the monsters and whatever, are a lot different. So it's all it's all a uh, new experience, which is something I always like about games. It's like, man, I I love the new experience, and I wish I could just like Men in Black flash erase my memory. So I could experience it all over again, but okay. uh, you know I can't. So this is the next best thing. Yeah, yeah, no, right on. That's that's the best part about sequels, and you know having better consoles to play them on, I suppose. So that seems pretty fun. That seems pretty fun. I probably would have traded that. Uh, we went camping in the black. This is still great. I still had a good time. Uh, but what made me happy is we went uh, camping out in the beautiful Black Hills of south dakota my home state absolutely love it it's it's always i uh, we went we drove around the needles got to see that uh, i'm not really a hiker like you've got to be the most important person in the world to make me go on a hike with you because i i hate hiking you can't <laughs> there's no possible way i would just go on a hike with like my friends like no or just some I, random guy off the street or just any random person at all like no like, hey, i will not go on hike yeah, Mr. Sexy no, Ranch Hand, you want not to go gonna hike? happen. I did. Nope. So we uh, another thing is went to Deadwood. Deadwood is basically uh, western or more western Las Vegas in the hills of South Dakota. That's basically the best way I can say what Deadwood is, and it's a mining town, right? It's where Wild Bill died, and I was wearing my American flag tank top. It was the Fourth of July. We saw the Deadwood Parade, which is cool. They do they reenact uh, gunfights, stuff like that. 
um, different true stories that happened throughout the history of Wild West Deadwood, whether that be uh, when Wild Bill died or how other people also horrible, terrible things that happened during the Wild West and gunfights and stuff like that, which is great. But someone was just like, yeah, America. I was like, calm <laughs> Calm down there. I, I like it too. Don't let I me. Mean, that's why I'm wearing the tank top. But let's. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Let's let's just take her easy there. Don't don't talk to me. Please. That's cool. I really that's, like the Grateful Dead. So I mean, that's I've never I've never been, but I imagine like there's you know a lot of like four fingered handprints everywhere and stuff like that. See, I don't even know what reference you're trying to make right now. It's that's okay because at least two listeners. Yeah, know of the Grateful Dead, and yeah. they, they know of Jerry Garcia. So yep. I don't yeah. know why he'd be in Deadwood. Rob Zombie comes out here sometimes. I think he likes really? to shoot movies. Yeah, he actually does. He likes to shoot movies out here for some reason. Digs the Badlands. I don't. I don't pretend to know what goes on inside Rob Zombie's head. But either, but either way, that aside, great time. I love camping. It's fun. Um, love the Black Hills, all that jazz. Anyways, very cool. Let's start with the episode. Goodness gracious. Let's let's get going, shall we? So the best way to start is in the news section, I would say. Yeah, I, I apologize to anybody, especially new listeners. I like banter. I quite enjoy it. But some people are like, you have been talking for 10 minutes. Let's maybe start, get the episode started <laughs> with like several other things that are actually related to hero clicks. This is not a video game camping podcast. I apologize. Yeah, let's, let's get into the meta. Let's caller. get into, that's what, that's what we that's are. What the that's what the listeners are here for. That's right. I, I yeah. completely forgot that we are the we best stand out from the hero other podcasts podcast. <laughs> by being the, the meta spokespersons. Nobody gets by in That's the meta true. without listening to us. We, we are the only Heroclix <laughs> meta podcast or YouTube channel or streaming yeah, yeah, yeah. anything that exists. We are the only ones. So if you... I new listeners. Even, yeah, new listeners. Don't even bother looking Just for don't. better <laughs> podcasts to teach you the ins and outs of barrier tech and the best colossal retaliation. Uh, the... If you really want to know what to get from the yeah. Fantastic Four set, yeah. we're your guys. We're, yep. Can't can't say anything <laughs> wrong there. That's hundred no, percent correct. No, no. I don't even know. I don't even know why we would. Let's keep the facade going though. Let's just let's pretend yeah. that we we've ever won a, a tournament that's worth talking about besides to our parents. So, anyways, let's. Jeez. Before really, before we get into the to the. To the new figures, oh, I do want to do like a little correction. I kept calling Alejandra Jones Alejandra Blaze, and it's mostly because she's on fire, and I just assume all Ghost Riders are some version of Blaze, but it is Alejandra Jones, and yeah. so I just want to throw that out there. Even though it doesn't matter, I'm sure no one really cared too much, but yeah, yeah it bothered me so... enough to say that. <laughs> Really quick before we get started, I'm just going to mention we're not going to talk about her, but the free comic book day Black Widow was spoiled. She got some running shot, pen blast, perplex, whatever. She's just part of the shifting focus. She is using the same sculpt as the white suit Black Widow with the reaching for her batons over her back. Uh, but we have that on our Facebook and Twitter if you want to go check that one out. Uh, we're going to go ahead and get started. The biggest thing the, is shifting focus on her. Uh, I agree. I think it's the only shifting focus figure with running shot, pen blast. Which is cool. And yeah. she's perplexed. Eleven for three. Yeah, yeah she's she's solid. Up. She brings it to what, like five options now, including the bike. Uh yes. So, yes. so I mean there's yeah. You'll want to pick her up if you're running Black Widow, but Absolutely. Alright, so Simeon, who do you want to talk about? We have two ones. We have one from two clicks from KO and one from comicbook.com. Where do Let's you want to start? Go in order. I think two clicks made theirs first. Okay. So sounds good. We'll go there. They have a WordPress, two clicks from ko.com, or no, dot wordpress.com. Um, the link's on our, our Facebook page. So I'm going to start off with one of the chases from this set. And as we've seen previously, if you've been paying attention to this set at all, uh, this is going to be one of the Battle World figures, although he doesn't have any Battle World specific keywords. So he's got, this is the maker, number 065. If you're 
unfamiliar the makers from the Ultimate Universe, as his real name is Reed Richards of Earth Six One Zero or One Six One Zero, which is the Ultimate Universe, which got destroyed in that storyline. So he has the Cabal, Revengers, and Scientist keywords. He's clocking in at 100 points, which you will see with the, the next chase that we cover, why 100 points seems kind of ridiculous for this guy's point value. He has traded Plasticity, Super Senses, and Giant Reach of 4, which I'm cool with all those. He can move through hindering and see through hindering. Um, no flavor text on those anymore, which is a little sad to me, because I always appreciated the flavor text on the seas through hindering thing. Um he has a second part to his first trait, and that is when Maker attacks, characters he target modify defense minus one for each team ability they can use. Not a lot of double team ability guys out there, but there are a, sh a just a ton of team abilities like Avengers and stuff. So he's going to get a they're going to get a minus one almost every time he targets them. Um, he has a second trait. I've been making some new tools, and this is the interesting one, in my opinion. Um, he gives him Outwit and Perplex, which the Maker should have those. Yeah, I mean, pretty obvious. Uh, when Maker hits after resolutions, generate a token that is a copy of an equipment object that's equipped to the hit opposing character. That object has max one for each object name and isn't scored. So equipment is still pretty big, I'd say, in like the Heroclix meta. Um, it's still big and like casual as well. There's a lot of infinity gems and stuff going around whether or not this guy is going to be able to make that hit and copy it i don't know but he's got some stuff that'll let him stick around for a while so it's possible i mean he can easily minus one their attack and pretty easily give himself a 12 to like make sure he hits so it's not it's not like it's going to be hard for him to hit it's just he starts with no move and attack so whether he's going to be able to Duplicate objects, I don't know, but it is cool that he can do it. Um, he has one special power, and that is that is his starting damage power for his first two clicks. So that is going to be his shape change, double slash mark power, generate a Maker 2 bystander. And so mm, we saw this on okay. the... We saw this on the back of the... Uh, the Dyson token packs. So this is going to be one that you do get with the Dyson token pack, you'll have one of these. His dial, he's got six range, one lightning bolt. He's got no special combat value or special combat symbols except for Indom. He has phasing for his first three clicks with an 877. Seven, seven. He has pen blast for his first three clicks with an 11, 11, 10. So you can make that a 12 top dial with his perplex outwit. Uh, then he has mastermind which is a supreme being above you, which is just classic maker. Um, to be honest, he bisected uh, Tony Stark's head in the Ultimate Universe because he's a mean guy. But uh, he's got that for his first three clicks. He's got that special power for two clicks. And then the rest of his dial, he goes to prob with never going below a three damage. It's a three solid damage, his whole dial. Um, six clicks long. Uh, from clicks four to six, he goes from mastermind and phasing to flurry and toughness. Still has that three damage. He goes from a ten attack on click four to an eleven on five and an eleven on six. So I, he's got two clicks of ten, but he's a solid, solid stats wise. Not really a lot of variation. He's got some seventeen defenses, but I mean, with mastermind and with the ability to make a pog, he's probably going to be okay. And that bystander pog is going to be the imperfect clone, Maker 2. Maker may use his outwit, perplex, and probability control as if he occupied this square. So he can only generate those on his first two clicks. And he's got the traded outwit, perplex, so he can use that his whole dial. He won't be able to use his prob with the Maker 2 bystander, which also has six range, one lightning bolt. He won't be able to use that until he gets to click three and he won't be able to make one again. So I definitely pair this guy up with something that can heal him if you're going to play him for casual. Um, I don't think he's going to make the meta scene at 100 points. He's just got not enough staying power at six clicks deep. Um, 
but the Imperfect Clone, the Maker 2, has Plasticity with 8 speed, 11 attack with Psychic Blast, that 6 range, 1 lightning bolt, 3 damage with that special damage power that allows the Maker to use his Outwit, Perplex, and Prob as if he occupied that square, and an 18 defense with Super Senses and Indomitable. So, overall, a solid figure, and I... Uh, oh, I should mention, uh, this was the... Italian Heroclix National Champion. So from 2016, um, I'll pretend that I can pronounce his name. Oh, Aurelio boy. D'Amico. Uh, D'Amico? I don't know. Something like that. That wasn't terrible. So congratulations to the 2016 Italian National Heroclix Champion who had the foresight in 2016 to select a character that they didn't Gee. have the rights to. Man. <laughs> Has more what a, patience. What a long shot. Yeah. Well, like, than I have in my entire life. It's pretty great. I can just imagine, like, 2017 rolls around, and he's like, seven Marvel sets, it's gotta be one of these, and then 2018 rolls around, and he's like, here's like six more Marvel sets, gotta be one of them. 2019, another five, another six Marvel sets, nope, no maker, and then finally, 2020, everything is wrong with the world, but Aurelio D'Amico finally gets his figure. Italian national and, uh, champion gets the maker. Like final. I don't even like. I don't. I don't love this figure. First of all, but like, I'm happy that he finally has it. That's that's what brings me joy oh, about yeah, this yeah, figure yeah. existing. Is that someone waited four years and he's finally got his national well, championship figure? God. They should. <laughs> they like, should. They should give him this figure. I don't think I'm most surprised, champions yeah. get them. So I, and it's a honestly chance. they should give him a full like sealed set. He, he waited four full, years. He deserves yeah. a sealed set of Fantastic Four. Uh, if anybody does, it's the yeah, Italian yeah, yeah. national champion. And uh, uh, to be honest, like the Maker is one of my favorite characters in comics. Period. Um, so you take like the brilliance of Reed, but you make him a bad guy, and all of a sudden he's the most interesting villain. Like in all of, uh, in definitely all of the Ultimate Comics universe, but in all of Marvel Comics, really, he's one of like the most like cerebral and interesting villains because he's got you know all these thoughts and processes that uh, the writer doesn't even know because no writer is as intelligent as the maker is. So they really just have to kind of write it backwards and just be like, yeah, he figured uh, out a way to okay. beat the heroes. Yeah, yep. it's yeah, it doesn't make any know. sense. But I uh, don't know how. Like Ultimate Reed Richards came from being like a little boy and like scared of zombies and like saving the world to being the bad guy, but it's interesting for sure. You don't have to oh, yeah. explain it. Don't explain it, please. Whatever you do, don't. But I think it's... to be fair, regular Marvel Reed Richards was on uh, Iron Man's side during Civil War, I, so it's not I, like it's a paragon it's, of no, it's not. To- no, it's not. I think Reed Richards overall in most uh, universes is a scumbag. I don't like Reed Richards. I think. <laughs> I think he's a bad person. Inherently, he's a bad person. Like, you can... Don't at me, uh, Fantastic Four Reed Richards stands, because he's a bad person. Like, period. <laughs> like, literally, in the zombie universe, he was like, well, there's... Literally, zombies are even better. They don't have to eat or whatever. I'll infect the entire Fantastic Four with the zombie virus. He's literally thrown away his humanity before. You can, there's nothing you can say about Reed Richards that will make me not think he's a scumbag in any version of the Marvel yeah. Universe. I'm sorry. Um, but, the but that is cool. A better... The maker makes a better Doom than even Doom does. Oh, really? Uh, other than the magic stuff, because of yeah. like, because of like how how callous and like, uh, he's like if Reed Richards had no conscience. But hey, yeah, speaking let's, of let's figure, move on. Not having a I've, conscious conscience. I've let's talk a lot about this guy. <laughs> yeah, uh, the Punisher robots, frightful for cosmic herald and robot keyword. So this is uh, not Frank Castle. This is just like some some thing. It's the frightful. It's the Punisher of the frightful four. It's like. A frog suit robot thing. It's very weird. It projects a look at it for some reason. Yeah, I guess. I um, so, Power Cosmic Flight Zero Range. It's a close combat boy. He is the Uncommon Prime in 031B. 125 point line, 75 point line, nine clicks, 125 points, six clicks, 75 points, which really makes me like the 75 point line a lot. He has a trait, two traits that are active for both point lines. So, the Frightful Four, strange, heavily armored being, half robot, half alive, friendly characters, the Frightful Four keyword, deal penetrating damage to opposing characters with two action tokens. So, if you wait for the time to be right, 
bam, bam, you get some penetrating damage. Not a lot of the Frightful Four can deal penetrating damage. This is this is pretty solid. Uh, then he also has another trait. Uh, close Combat Expert, comma, Colossal Stamina, comma, Giant Reach 2, period. So this dude can keep on pushing. He already has Power Cosmic, which is great. He has Close Combat Expert up his stats, since he's a Close Combat guy. And then he has uh, Giant Reach 2, which just really helps out his reach overall. He doesn't have a lot of sidestep in his dial to make use of that Close Combat Expert. Only two clicks of it on 6 and 7 doesn't start with it ever. But he does have, on his top dial, and then on his last two clicks, he has a Special Speed Power, which is char just Charge Flurry. Really simple. But when he has Charge Flurry, top dial, he's a 10 speed, 11 attack, 18 defense, invincible, with 4 damage. So he's 11 for 4. Right away, just like period, he's great in Battle Royales. So if we do Battle Royales with this set, or whatever, this dude is like first pick of the booster, Charge Flurry, Giant Reach 2, he has a 7 square reach. Awesome. Beautiful. 11 for 4 Battle Royales. He could like kill two, two small things, or put a huge dent in one big thing. I think he's great. Plus, he has nine clicks for 25 points. In a battle royale, it's, that's dope. Now, for 75 oh, yeah. points, he, he does go on some charge later, some invulnerability. But for 75 points, I really like this point line probably the most. So, he has six clicks of life. He starts with impervious, nine speed, hypersonic speed, 11 attack, nothing, three damage, nothing, 18 impervious. Which then rolls on to some charge quake, some sidestep, invulnerability. He gets battle fury for the last four clicks of his dial for both dial lines, which literally only helps him. He has no range. Oh, yeah. It doesn't affect him at all. You know, yeah. and he, he won't only be... gets rid of shape change, mastermind in cap and mind control. Exactly. So uh, not, not mastermind. Not mastermind. Yeah, the other yeah. one. Jeez, Simi, yeah, goodness yeah. gracious for being a three time master 20... champion. It's so weird. <laughs> you know, 2017 hero player. 2017 rules out the window. That's right. It's been three years. Move past it, man. Come on. Uh, but he, he gets Steel Energy on the last three clicks, which is great because he also has his Charge Flurry on his last two clicks. And on his last click, he's a 7-speed Charge Flurry, right? 12-attack, uh, Steel Energy, 16-defense toughness, but he's a 4-damage Battle Fury. So he's a 12-for-4 Flurry on his last click. This guy's pretty awesome. He has flight the whole time. He's a great close combat beat stick. I don't think he's, like, crazy competitive Definitely not at 125. At 75, he is a really solid attacker that I really enjoy. He yeah, doesn't do a lot of gimmick. He doesn't do a lot of gimmicky stuff. I don't think Frightful Four is going to be the keyword to play. But I think in a normal hero claim, this guy's really cool. I think he's really fun, and he's a, just yeah. a neat climb. So he's he's pretty sweet. I'm not going to pretend anymore. Like I know I know what the is going to shape the meta, but I know I do know that robot and cosmic are good keywords. Um, so negating the frightful four, this guy alone on click nine, if you somehow manage to get him to click nine and he's still alive and he targets a character that has two action tokens with flurry, he's a 12 for four and that's penetrating damage. And, mm -hmm. uh, he's, he's got that giant reach of two. So like he doesn't really even potentially at bottom dial, he doesn't need to charge. He's probably tied up with somebody. But even at 75 points, an 11 for 3 with hypersonic that can deal penetrating, there's no other hypersonic stuff out there that can do penetrating unless it's like some special uh, like Captain Marvel kind of thing. But uh, yeah. yeah, this guy's he's very interesting. Uh, um, he's a really solid sealed pull if anyone here is playing mm -hmm. sealed uh, for this set. And uh, yeah, I, I don't see him not making it to a few of my uh, little casual teams just because of how how crazy like for 75 or 125 he just fits a lot of teams whether it's Absolutely. cosmic robot probably not herald i probably won't run that mm, anytime i don't think i've ever played but... a herald uh keyword team like ever in my entire life so yeah no not yeah. gonna happen. not gonna play him at 75 and attach the the Galactus <laughs> dial for t another 25 points. Uh, to get the somebody top might. Dial. I, I won't. Mean, yeah, he really needs that leap climb top dial. That's it honestly, gives him, it gives him minimum five, five range for the two clicks on click 75 that he has range. Uh, which would help his hypersonic, I suppose. That's not terrible. That gives him a whole plus one uh, range in <laughs> yeah, reusing hypersonic. Giant reach. Yeah. Uh, which <laughs> obviously makes this figure a tier one competitive piece. So as as a former world champion, Calder Ness, I, I know what is good. So, <laughs> yeah, definitely. It's a multi multiple state champion. Uh, I, w I will go ahead and 
qualify him as an S class hero. Uh, yeah. All right. Well, let's move All right, on. So, moving into comicbook.com's news. So, comicbook.com, they've got news for a lot of stuff. And Hero Clicks is one of those things that they occasionally uh, get some news for. So, Correct. we got. Uh, another chase from the set and i think this might be the last one uh no god doom god doom is the final chase otherwise he's the one we're waiting covered... for yeah which means he's the one scott porter will pull day. tomorrow morning monday almost seven six is one almost yeah without fail scott always uh gets the best one yes. uh we'll see i guess which uh, is why he got the wonder twist last time right simian yeah totally <laughs> yeah the best ones so this is Reed Richards, Fixer of the Universe. And I'm not just adding that flavor text. He is a title character. So he's got one of those really long, awkward names. Reed Richards, Fixer of the Universe. He's got Fantastic Four, Illuminati, and Scientist Keywords. Those all fit. I'm fine with those. He's got one trait. It is Title Character, See Inside. So that means that the rest of his dial is pretty boring. Um, he is seven clicks long. He has a full dial of leap climb going from an 11 to a 10 to a 9, one click that is 8 speed. He has a 10 attack for his first 5 clicks. He goes up to an 11 and then a 12 on click 7. He has an 18 for his first 2 clicks with toughness on a journey is the name of that power. And then he wow. gets some super senses, which is chance of success is slim. Wow, Reed, you're really selling me on uh, caring about you in Battle World. Uh, so <laughs> super senses, he goes down to a 17 on click five. He bumps up to an 18 and then a 19 and then a 20 on click seven, six and seven. Um, so he gets a little bit better, but, uh, his damage values go from two all across the board till click seven, where he drops to a one. So he gets better with attacks and stuff, but, uh, his damage is still kind of suffering. So for all of that, oh, I'm sorry. Clicks one and two, he has leadership, which is, however, well-intentioned. And then he goes to his probability control on clicks three through six. And that is, I mean, to end this charade. Uh, why did you say it like that? Why did you say charade like charade? Why? why charade. Why? For, for what That's other purpose I... besides just bothering me, Simeon, would you say that? This is a charade, Caller. Just, I and just... the charade. <laughs> just, just read the rest of the dial, and let's okay, not. I'll, let's just not. I'll, I'll pronounce it how you want. Charade. Uh, um, you see, you made it worse somehow. <laughs> I really didn't think it was some charade, but here we are. So let's get into the, the title character. If you don't know, title characters work like planeswalkers and magic. They have plus abilities, minus abilities. Sometimes they've got plus or minus zero abilities. Each of these abilities can be activated once per turn. Uh, if the title character activates one of these plot abilities, whether it's a plus or minus, at the end of the, your turn, if you didn't attack an opposing character, you are dealt one unavoidable damage. Um, they also usually come with a caveat when they're KO'd. This one comes with, when KO'd, generate a Molecule Man bystander in an opponent's starting area that is friendly to that force. So you will give them a Molecule Man bystander. And we'll get into that when I'm done with his plot ability. So his plus one plot ability, he starts with zero plot points. This will give you a plus one. He doesn't have any plot ability that's like out of reach, like the uh, title character Thor, right. who has like a yeah. minus ten. So really, you're not going to be using these like sparingly. You're going to be like I'm um, like plus one, minus one, plus zero. You know, you're going to be using these like constantly because uh why not um so his plus one is no more super heroics for or a while heroics i mean if we're pronouncing things wrong i'm just saying uh, yeah 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 i'm pretty sure he said like superheroes because this this quote is from when he's talking to um his son franklin at the very end it's like the yeah prologue. of course yeah whatever uh, just read, no just read the power i didn't really want to get into a side tangent <laughs> So it's it's interesting because there's a Star Trek Deep Space Nine episode that's kind of parallel. Mm, to this. Can we not though? Can we not talk like this no, is like Star I, Trek on the docket? <laughs> can we not talk about Star Trek, please? Uh, all right. So <laughs> I just had to throw Calder a bone with Star Trek. I know how much yeah. he loves it. So this this mm. plus one plot ability gives him free outwit perplex until your next turn. 
at the end of your turn, heal Reed Richards, fixer of the universe, one click if he targeted one or more opposing characters with outwit or perplex this turn. So, since it is at the end of your turn, I don't have a clear ruling on this, but I'm just gonna I'm just gonna throw it out there. Since it's at the end of your turn, and the title character plot ability uh, caveat is at the end of your turn. If you didn't attack an opposing character, you are dealt one of unavoidable damage. I believe as the controlling character, you can be you can choose to be dealt the one unavoidable damage, or maybe one unavoidable just happens because it's unavoidable, and then you can activate this afterwards, which heals you one, keeping you top dial or keeping you from taking more damage uh, bearing the fact that you're not on click 7 and just get KO'd from doing that Um, and so you don't have to actually make attacks to keep this guy healed up. Uh, Whether I'm wrong or right, I don't 100% know, but where you have a way to heal even while not targeting people with attacks and since he's mostly a 10 attack and mostly 2 damage, you're probably using him as a support piece, so that's extra good for me. Um, but you don't really need to rack up those plus 1s, because his other plot ability is plus 0. And this is uncovering the real source of Doom's power. Free, if Reed Richards, fixer of the universe, occupies an opponent's starting area, generate a Molecule Man bystander max 1. So now we'll get into the Molecule Man bystander. Because this is the caveat, if you're KO'd, your opponent gets this. Otherwise, it's a plus zero, so you can do this turn one. It doesn't help you, but you can. Well, you have to get to the opponent's starting area first, so maybe it's a turn two thing. But uh, this Molecule Man starts with a zero speed sidestep, so he can move two if he needs to. He's got 12 range with one lightning bolt, 12 attack with precision strike, 18 defense with energy shield, and one damage with prob. He has a single trait, and that is at the end of your turn, if Molecule Man is outside of a starting area, KO him. So it keeps him in the starting area. This is very unique to the Secret Wars uh, storyline. Other than that, it makes no sense for uh, Owen Reed. Um, Owen Reese, whatever his name is. Um, The 12 attack, 1 damage with Precision Strike means that he can can take out anything that's like a one-click long he can he can damage anybody period uh that's pretty sweet his 12 range one lightning bolt is really cool he doesn't have any indom or anything so you can't push him unless you want to minus zero plus zero to make another one so but other than that i mean 18 with energy shield means he's a 20 from range uh they could base him and attack him but he's got prob for 12 squares he's pretty solid there's a certain Hellfire Club member that could easily uh, play him with 12 range being pretty solid for mm. probbing like axe and stuff. Yeah. Uh, that's almost half the board, depending on where you place him. And Sidestep lets him move around just a little bit without digging into your action totals. So he's pretty solid. You don't want to give your opponent him. It's also not the end of the world if you do, though, because... Uh, no, I agree. 18 Donald, defense, Donald Pierce no love this guy. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Donald, that Donald that, Pierce. That member if of the Hellfire move, Club. get a minus one to attack and damage. Yeah, Donald yes. Pierce. Yes, sorry, keep uh, going. So is, is tr- this Reed fixer of the universe, uh, his final plot ability is the minus one and this is convincing owen to unwrite this victor's twisted reality this is free if reed richards fixer of the universe is adjacent to molecule man roll a d6 deal that much unavoidable damage to the lowest point character on the opponent's force you choose if there's a tie so other than the fact that uh convincing owen to unwrite victor's twisted reality it would make more sense with that flavor text if he was dealing damage to the highest point character. The -hmm. fact that you can deal any unavoidable damage to the lowest point character is pretty solid. Uh, You do have to be in the opponent's starting area to drop him. Uh, Technically, if you're playing this Reed Richards on a team with Jason Wingard, this Reed Richards has to be on your sideline to, for, uh, for Jason to generate the bystander, so yes. you can't play to. So there's no dropping a uh, Molecule Man in your own starting area with uh, 
with Jason and then having Reed activate this minus one, like turn two, it'd be really cool if you could. And uh, in Golden Age, you actually super can because it just says adjacent to Molecule Man. It doesn't specify the bystander Molecule Man. So there are Golden Age, mo- there is a, at least one Golden Age Molecule yeah, Man. Yeah, there's a do. Golden Age Molecule Man, yeah. <laughs> But uh, so in Golden Age, this is really fun. But uh, in modern, you'll have to get across the board, which could be detrimental to your Reed Richards. Um, but dealing a D6 worth of unavoidable to the lowest point character, uh, there's a few. There's a few teams that could suffer from that. Um, any team that doesn't have like some colossals that just you know get KO'd and they don't really care. Any team that's like a force of three or less, or Let's say like it takes you a little while and you're only using this 60 point investment as like a maybe kind of situation with his leap climb 11 speed um, mm. and you just you just get read to their like late game and they only have one character left. Technically that character is their lowest point character at that point and so you can just start dealing oh. that character like let's yeah. say this is going against Galactus. And for 60 points, you get all the way over to Galactus' starting line, and uh, you just drop a Molecule Man, and you start dealing him, like, three or four or five or six unavoidable. That's pretty good. There's no reason not to. It's pretty pretty solid. I think this guy, for 60 points, I'm not going to ramble too much longer, because I've already gone way too much in depth. In you this have. Guy. You have. Yeah. Uh, but <laughs> for 60 points, I think he's solid for... The few things that he does, not even paying attention to the Owen Reed bystander, just Reese. for the plus Once one again, ability. He said his name wrong like five times. It's Owen Reese. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Molecule Man, Owen Reese. Yeah. It's it's uh, Reed Richards and Owen Reed. Um, Don't, <laughs> so, all right. Pretending like the bystander doesn't even exist, this guy's worth 60 points. Uh, yes. He's got the Fantastic Four team ability. No Indom, so there's no pushing him. But again, uh, he does have a way to heal. So I just think it's it's a pretty fun character. Uh, mm-hmm. It's definitely one that I'm going to want to round out my Battle World team. And uh, that's about it. That's all I, that's all I really got to say about it. Uh, really, all I have to say is I like the idea of flipping the script for a title character figure. This guy um, has a way to just be a support figure, if that's all he wants to be, which is basically all he can be, totally. His stats don't allow him to be much more. Yeah. Uh, being able to target so, an opposing character without like an attack is something that a lot of title characters, like title character Loki and Professor X Dreamer, definitely needed. Yeah, and they for finally sure. got it right with this guy. So those guys were both more supporting figures, but they didn't they didn't quite work, which is why a lot of people didn't like them. Uh, I thought they were bad, even though Professor X Dreamer was awesome, and I got second place with them. Anyways, uh, so. This this read is cool, and he does what they do, but he does it better, and he does it right, and I like him. I think he's solid. I think he's unique. That's, that's basically all I'm going to say. I wish only Gripe, and I haven't really read Battle Worlds, the part that he's in, so I I wish he would have a Battle World other keyword at the very least. I don't think he was really yeah. on any any sides, but to at the very least playing with his kids, that would have been kind of cool on a theme team. Yeah, I guess Fantastic Something, Four, uh, I think you can still play him on, but Battle Worlds, yeah. but I felt cool. Also, I don't know why, but when it's a title character, they only get the one trait, and that's the title character trait that gives mm-hmm. them like the plus and minus stuff. I totally could have seen this guy getting a trait that gave him like plasticity and uh, shape change, because that's like his, his whole power set, and uh, he has no shape change his whole dial, and that's kind of Reed's whole thing, is like changing his shape. Um, other than being a super genius, whatever, whatever kind of stuff. Uh, but for being a very that, specific like, Reed Richards, then it doesn't have to focus on his normal power set, right? Yeah. Like, I don't know if and he's his, getting into a ton of scraps on his journey throughout Battle World or whatever, but... No, not really. He's a very um, simple figure. Very simple understand man. He's very certain, simple, very simple man. man. I, I just grow a beard and I wave my arms about. So that's all I want yeah. to do. Yeah, that's, that's my other gripe is the sculpts kind of kind of weird for it's the battle weird. world setting especially since he's not like an attack heavy kind of guy yeah. he looks so like anyway, he's doing a lot of attacking yeah. but... let's talk about an attack heavy <laughs> kind of guy we're going to talk about yeah. 47a silver surfer the non-prime silver surfer i'm very happy that he's number one just a rare number two he's the non-prime because i i read the dawn greenwood silver surfer storyline uh just like 
two or three issues and I enjoyed it. I thought it was fun. I liked the art. It was it was a fun book. So I'm glad that he is just a rare and he's also the non prime. So he has a trait, Don Greenwood, ordinary girl from Earth, beginning of the game, generated Don Greenwood bystander. Let's see what she does. She has nothing special about her at all, so she is totally standard combat symbol. She has zero range. She has six speed, sidestep, eight attack, special attack power, 15 defense with nothing, and a one damage with a damage power. Her trait is, I have to leave, you know, when Don Greenwood is KO'd by an opponent's attack, modify Silver Surfer's combat values plus one for the rest of the game. So if Silver Surfer is still a threat, you might just have to let Dawn keep being the supporty gal that she is. Now, why would I want to kill her? Uh, here's yeah, why. Calder. Why would I want to? Why would I want to attack this if it's going to give Silver Surfer a plus one for the rest of the game? Because she also has enhancement and perplex, but only to target a character named Silver Surfer. So she's going to be modifying his damage value plus one whenever he uses uh, ranged attack, and also perplexing up any other combat value, whether that be range, speed, attack, defense, or damage. Uh, so she's very versatile. Also, if you give her a power action, this is her attack power. If Don Green is within four squares of an opposing character, you can place Silver Surfer adjacent from anywhere on the map that's pretty awesome by the way it doesn't say a friendly character named silver surfer so if you wanted to bring their other their your opponent silver surfer over oh, that's... To, <laughs> you totally could you totally, yeah i didn't even catch that that's awesome neat. yeah it's like <laughs> that'd be, i mean it'd be really like weird it'd be really weird to like put silver surfer on your starting or on your sideline with Jason, just in oh, case, yeah, like, just, he ran just, Silver Surfer. Just to do that. Or if you, like, if it was, like, a clone matchup and you both were running Silver Surfer, it'd be actually, I mean, it'd be hilarious, whichever hilarious. Don Green oh, yeah. got close enough first to do that. But, yeah, I didn't realize that. So I, I totally think that's great. So she has some moving the board around shenanigans. So if you had, like, Silver Surfer tied up and locked down, you could move him all the way away, let him regen up, whatever, late dial. Let's talk about his dial set. He has nine clicks of light. He has 100 or 75 points. Special speed power for the first five clicks of his dial. I'm sorry, 150 or 75 points. Yeah, yeah, uh, he's yeah. power cosmic. He has flight. He's eight range. And no other special combat symbols besides that single target. So... Special speed power for the first five clicks at 150, or his very first click, 75, is anywhere and everywhere hypersonic speed. And when Silver Surfer uses it after resolutions, you may choose a character he hit or moved through. The chosen character gains immobile until your next turn, so that's pretty darn cool, I will say. Ooh. Silver special... Surfer, I think Vince McMahon wants to give you a contract. Ooh. <laughs> and then his special Some attack WWE power. teams. <laughs> he has... Yeah, oh yeah, dude, the amount of immobile that'd be going around for WWE would be great. Right. Uh, we need a Vince McMahon that gives someone the WWE keyword. Jeez, Simeon, you saying that, it'd be so dope. A Steve Rogers version of Vince McMahon. I've been saying, we need a Vince McMahon title character. He can give people Battle I Fury literally and plus never one heard stats. You say that, and... but yeah, okay, for this for this sake, <laughs> just to keep going with Silver Surfer, I will agree. Yes, we should have made... We, that needs to be a thing that exists. <laughs> Anyways, He'll be there eventually. His his yeah. attack power he has for his first six clicks on 150 or his first two clicks on 75 is, I only attack to defend, free, choose a standard attack power, an opposing character that eight squares can use. Silver Surfer can use that power until your next turn. Which is pretty solid. So he won't have anything for like an Alpha Strike style situation unless you get him within eight squares first, then hypersonic up. Either way, you can't really use any attack powers besides precision strike with hypersonic speed. So just something to keep in mind. Or if you're just sitting there chilling, maybe just have Dawn with you there. You can choose yeah. uh, Pen Blast if or you, something. If you can somehow like TK Dawn out, sidestepper, and then power action yank him over, and then he can choose it, sure. But again, like like Calder just said, with hypersonic, it's precision strike or nothing for the most yeah. part. So really, I mean, just hitting 12 for four is pretty solid. All right, so that's it for special powers. He has hypersonic speed his whole dial, by the way. Once he loses his special hypersonic speed, he gets it for his last four clicks, just normally printed. He's very easy. Uh, to understand his stats wise there's no going up and down nothing crazy so he has a 12 for speed on his first two clicks 11 for the next four clicks and then 10 for the last three he has a 12 attack on his very top dial at 150 then 11 for the next four clicks of life so he starts at 11 on 75 points then he has a 10 for the last four clicks of his life on attack he has an 18 for the first three clicks of his life on 150 a 17 for the rest of the dial so 
very consistent, easy to understand stats. Same thing with his damage. He has a four damage on his 150 top dial, and he has three damage the rest of his dial. His defense powers, he has some invincible, with then he rolls onto some impervious. So it's all two by two. Then he goes on invulnerability, then toughness on a single click. He's one click of tough of regeneration on his very last click of his dial. Same thing with his damage powers. It goes two by two. He starts with two clicks of prob, two clicks of outwit, and then three clicks, two clicks of shape change, two clicks of support. So he's going to start with uh, shape change and invulnerability on a 75 point line. I like the Silver Surfer. I enjoyed the storyline. I think getting a very solid 150 point silver, silver Surfer, goodness gracious, is awesome, as well as a really fun like tertiary secondary attacker 75 point silver surfer if we count in the fact that he's bringing in dawn is really solid so i like the half point lines they're doing in this set it seems whiz kids has really gotten over the fact that they don't know how to make a split dial very well and i think they're doing it really really well in this set just based on what i've seen from the punisher what i've seen from silver surfer i really like the split dials in the set and i enjoy the silver surfer for sure yeah, yeah. That's all I have to say. The last thing, the last thing I'll say is, do his the flavor text on his last two damage powers? Can you read those for me really quick? Yeah, I can shape grow shape. hair if I wanted to. This is shape change, and then his support is by healing her. So that doesn't go with the <laughs> growing hair. His no, but the is way they the stacked them. <laughs> the way they stacked them together, it just. <laughs> I can yeah. grow hair by healing her. Uh, that's funny. No, it's it's supposed to go, yeah, with his outwit, which There's is to defeat really... the queen of nevers. Yes. Uh, I I love in this comic, she's like, wait a second. She's like just on his surfboard, right? So she's like just hug, hugs his surfboard basically the entire time whenever they travel. She's like, how am I not like suffocating I'm out in space or like freezing or whatever? And he's just like the power cosmic. It's like, I don't have to explain anything. Just the power cosmic. That's it. Speed period. force. It's, yeah. yeah, it's it's like I don't have to explain any rules. Marvel writers already gave me one tool. It's the power cosmic. All I have to do is say the power cosmic, and any question you have is basically explained, which is awesome. So thank you to comicbook.com for, uh, yeah. number one, getting these previews. Jamie Lovett, friend of the show, we've had him on before, wrote this article. He's the he's the Heroclix guy over there, so really appreciate seeing this uh, from comicbook.com. Moving they also on. gave us... A uh, super rare blast star. Oh yeah. So but I mean, I we're, did, we're not going to get into his honestly. dial. He's he's interesting enough that like I'd play him at some point, but he's not interesting enough that we're going to cover him right now. Right. And we've already been talking for like forty five minutes, and I I want to want to get the show over with because <laughs> I just I can't stand spending this much alone time with Simeon. It's you guys it's don't know what it does. To you. It's way too late. So uh, just to cover <laughs> news, it's going to be over. Not over, but the registration is going to be closed by the time you hear it. But the critical clicks, not the whatever I might have called it last week. I apologize. The critical clicks kilted classic. Say that five times fast. Is at over one hundred entries. I believe they're at one hundred six last I checked. But just to be safe, they're at over one hundred entrances in the figures. The in the figures, blah, blah, blah. 100 players have entered. Over 100 players. What What's cool about this tournament is every single time a round happens, it's going to be single elimination. There will be a loser's bracket, which is cool. If you have any questions, go ahead and ask PJ Bolin. I imagine he's not tired of hearing questions about the tournament at all by now, being the guy that no, runs no, it. No, no, no. No. Uh, I'm Never. sure he'd love to talk about, <laughs> love to talk about a, a question or rules interaction for like eight hours a day, I'm sure. Anyways, so every single time a round is over... Every figure and game element on a winning team is banned for the next round. So it's pretty cool. Yes. So if a team that has, you know, Tri Sentinel on it, or a team that has uh, whatever cool title characters, Jason Wingard, uh, Immortal Hulk, Ace, whatever cool things are meta right now, like, right, whatever wins that round is just banned next round, you know? So it's yeah, going to not let a lot people... of, uh, like, the meta is quote unquote diverse i mean if you if your view of the meta is like a hundred figures or less um there's not a lot of colossal retaliation or sideline stuff and so i imagine the first round which will be like 50 plus winners at this point just might wipe out all sideline and retaliation completely 
I imagine. So sideline, we have the let's cause trouble troublemakers, and we have the trouble alerts. I imagine those will be gone just by how many there are. So there's twenty altogether. I yeah. believe. 12 whether or not so. they're brought in, or whether or not they're like brought the in, if they are just yeah. on your sideline. So I'll probably. Uh, and people are just, they want to be safe, right? This is the first round. They can use everything. Their sideline is going to be stacked with these guys. If they are not using Jason Wingard, who's going to be using, like, Pog people to call in. Um, I don't remember if Black Widow is from outside the game or on your sideline. It's probably outside the game. She's probably broken, I imagine, because uh, she's dumb. The Chase Black Widow with the figures is probably outside the game. Anyways, so, like, that's what their sideline is basically going to be composed of. But I don't, I don't want to talk about this tournament too much since it's already over. But we're going to try to record some of our games. I don't know how to record things at all. Technology is not my strong suit. I know how to raise cattle and eat beef and fry a steak, fry a steak, grill a steak, goodness gracious. I'm already too tired to even do anything. So I don't know how to run computers. I would like to record my games. We might get that figured out. Simeon will for sure record his one game that he'll get to play before he's eliminated <laughs> round one in the Kilted hey, Classic. It's double elimination now, so I get at least oh, two is it? recordings. Oh, uh, boy, of yeah. course it is. All right. I got to back up all this smack talk I've been throwing down on Facebook for a few years okay. by uh, absolutely losing in the first two rounds. So, yes. I haven't uh, played I... any modern, like, rotation anything at all. Like, a lot of people have been playing it running up to this and i haven't played any so i'm sticking with like an old build that's like slightly newish but uh we'll see how round one goes you guys will be able to see how run one goes on our youtube uh i'll try and stream it but most likely it'll just be recorded and we won't even bother with the stream so yeah yeah to be honest with you guys i don't care about streaming like at all i know people think that's like cool and fun but i've never once been like yes i'm gonna go watch a live stream that is happening at the same time that I also want to go yeah. watch something. It just doesn't happen to me. I get people like it. Obviously, Twitch isn't just in the gutter. So it's obvious people obviously <laughs> enjoy doing things like that. So we'll try to do that if if there's interest. And even if yeah. there isn't interest, we'll we'll probably still at least make an attempt. Like an attempt was made. Might not be amazing, but we're gonna make yeah, it. Yeah, and I can't I can't promise even if we do stream, I probably won't interact with the chat at all. I'll probably have It'll it, be like, too focused. And I'll, yeah, I'll yeah. be like, Ooh, super competitive. My brain works when I'm playing like this. So, sorry, guys. Except your turns take over 10 minutes, and your opponent may have two turns uh, to even play. So, we'll see. We shall see. That's a joke. Yeah. Everybody calm down. Simeon's not a Plus slow 16 player. On He's just a slow thinker. Ooh, don't, don't give away your <laughs> round one team, Simeon. Jeez. Goodness. I mean, at gracious. this point, if, at this what point, are you if doing? You, haven't already built your team and you're like oh man i need to beat a plus 16 there's no way you can do that i mean there's there's a way you can beat a plus 16 and that's if you already planned on playing a plus something that's like close to it now okay whatever we're over i'm done I'm, we're done <laughs> yeah, talking yeah. about this uh but check those Kilted out classic. in the future kilted classic critical YouTube. clicks pj bolin uh the other guy i forget whatever him he's pretty uh, Cram He's, Company I was, Crampton. I, I knew his name. I just didn't want to say it. You know, it's just I just I just I don't know why. I was making a joke. Thanks yeah. to me. Joke. My Twitter picture has him in it. It's just the back it's of his head, back. though. Oh, very nice. That's some would say the best part of his head. Ooh, <laughs> okay. Don't know. Don't know what I meant by that. Let's go ahead and move on. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and talk about the Patreon really quickly. If you enjoy the show or have been enjoying the show, you can go ahead and support us on patreon.com slash dial H for hero clicks. We are giving away all sorts of cool stuff. Last month, we gave away cosmic clash starter set and some snazzy action tokens. Uh, I have normal howdy, howdy, let's get rowdy dial H action tokens, as well as a Lex Luthor 40 cakes counter action token. So for those of you that own a Lex Luthor, uh, super friends, Super villains, whatever chase, uh, Legion of Doom guy. You can go ahead and pick those up on Patreon. Just when you join, let me know what tokens you want. And for those of you that own a Shawn Michaels, we have tuning up the band tokens. So those are pretty cool. Simeon won yeah. with Shawn Michaels on a popper team. So these are both figures me and Simeon enjoy. I like Lex Luthor, Simeon like Shawn Michaels. I figured we'd make tokens for him. I'll try to make more cool, custom, more unique ones than just like pogs and stuff. Since there's yeah, already a really If you don't own a like Shawn Michaels, and you've never tuned up the band. I feel sorry for you, brother, because uh, 
there's no greater satisfaction in hero clicks than having plus three attack and damage and scooting all the way across the board as Shawn Michaels does just flies across 24 feet of space <laughs> to kick somebody so hard that they are knocked unconscious as the KO would indicate. Yep. That is 100% correct. So check out check out our Patreon if you want tokens like that, or if you just want to support us, or if you just want to get entered into a monthly giveaway. We give you cool bonuses for the longer you support us, or how much money you give us each month. Uh, you're already paying for the $25 fee for Patreon. Uh, most of this is going to go into us getting better sound equipment. Uh, Simeon, just awful. You can hear that crackling over. He's just got tinfoil yep, kind of constantly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Anyways... No, but it'll it'll all go back into funding using the podcast. Using crystal or, and copper, or to funding stuff. Right now. It's it's like this. Uh, he's using a can and a string, a very long string that hooks up to my yeah, computer. Yeah. It's basically, That's why from I downloaded Nebraska. Fallout Four to figure out how to broadcast. Exactly, they've got the 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 ingredients on there. All right. So moving on, since we've been talking about this for too long, support us on Patreon if you want to. Let's cut that short. Uh, now moving on to the community section. There are dozens of us. Dozens! Last week, Community Tuesdays, we asked you guys, what is your favorite figure from Hammer, Thor, or Brave in the Bold? Now, Simeon, I'm going to let you go ahead and read the first answer, actually. You go ahead and read your answer that you enjoy the most, that you got for this Community Tuesdays. All right. Now, I don't want to, like, I don't want to dissuade anyone from commenting. Don't I just, spoil it. Don't picked, spoil it yet. Yeah. I, I picked this comment out because it happened to pop up in my notifications and I happened to click on it. I don't always get to the comments until we record, so I don't always like pay attention to everything. But I really liked this comment because it was very nuanced and it had a lot of reasons as to why they picked these figures. So Jeff Polier says, rather than the most powerful then, back then, or the best to play with now, my choices are simply the pieces that I'm glad exist. And I couldn't agree more. I'm glad that like I play a lot of these pieces, and I also keep a lot of these pieces that exist just because they do. So like Dakin, he's, he's awful, but I'm glad he exists, so I keep him. Uh, Jeff Poyer continues, This isn't to discount any other amazing pieces that I'm gl- also glad exist. These are just my top picks from each. First is Hammer of Thor 048 Spider-Man. Oh my gosh, the first time I saw this sculpt, a huge smile split my face. It is so fun. Oddly enough, the current way figures are calculated, he's actually decent for his points. Now, if you don't know, this Hammer of Thor Spider-Man is the one that has the Asgardian helmet with the wings, the big ol' hammer that he's smashing down with a lightning effect. I have him on my shelf. He's beautiful. And uh, I hope they remake him because, man, Spider-Man with a hammer is just cool. He continues. Next is Brave and the Bold number 048. What a coincidence. 048 on both sets. The Flash and Green Lantern. This is a duo fig, a peanut base. These aren't my favorite versions of either character, but it's such an iconic sculpt. And their powers were thematically on point. 200 points is too much today for what they do, but they look great speeding across the map. And I couldn't agree more. Uh, it's good old Green Lantern giving the Flash like a, a construct treadmill kind of thing that he can run down. I don't know if Green Lantern can think as fast as Flash can run. Um, probably not. But for 200 points, you sure hope so. And uh, it looks great on the shelf. Um, that's one of these things with... Uh, Hammer of Thor and Brave and the Bold as a side tangent here. They look great on the shelf. Uh, Brave they and the do. Bold especially has a ton of ton of uh, duo figures, especially in the super rare slots that are just great because uh, the figures just like meld really well together. The double flashes, the Superman and Flash, the Superman or the Flash and Green Lantern. Um, there's just like a ton of Batman, Green Arrow. They just look really cool. So that's that's the first comment on Facebook. Okay, awesome. Before I read mine, ha, joke's on you. I'm not reading any of mine because you know what you all just <laughs> did? You know what you just proved <laughs> to me is that Community Tuesdays, for some reason, gets more comments. How many comments do we have on Facebook, Simeon, for this Community Tuesdays question? We got a big old 14. 
14. That is 14 individual thinking people, I imagine. Maybe there's one or two replies that are like people that already commented. But 14 individual people mentioned a figures that they enjoyed from these two sets. Now, you may not know this, but every single Thursday on our YouTube channel, we upload a little video called Thursday Throwdown, where me and Simeon play using figures from old Golden Age sets, and we face off against each other. What figures? Uh, how do we decide what figures we play? We, we decide on your votes! That's right! So for all you people that commented on this Community Tuesday's question, it would be really great if you would take that same gumption, <laughs> that same passion for Community Tuesdays, and instead put them on votes for Thursday Throwdown. Right now, we average um, Malcolm Rush votes, D Dylan Disney votes on Facebook, and those are the only two people that vote on Facebook. We have about two or three people that vote on Discord, and maybe two or three people that vote on Twitter. And I want to see a ton of votes for Thursday Throwdown. I want people to be excited about it. So if you're just as excited as us just reading about your figure or your whatever favorite figure from these sets, wouldn't you be more excited if your figure gets voted into Thursday Throwdown and you get to see us play with it? You guys just proved to me that it's not <laughs> its not like posting anything. It's just like, hey, look, it's easier for me to do Community Tuesdays because I actually listen to podcasts. If you listen to podcasts, check out the YouTube channel. It's like an hour or so every week. Maybe you don't have time to watch a game, but these are seriously fun Golden Age games. We're the only people on YouTube that are doing this. We're going through every single Hero Click set, and we will not stop until we get to current. And even once we get to current, we'll probably just keep going, and we'll just wait for new sets to come out. And yeah. we're only doing main sets. If we get After to like current, the current uh, we're, we're just going to like we're gonna throw all the colossals against each other yeah. in like some sort of thing. We'll maybe we'll go back. And we'll do feeds the or gravity feeds. Yeah. Maybe all the fast forces. Um, but yeah, we've only got a few sets left before Marvel fully takes over, and uh, there's only one DC set a year. Yeah. So you guys got to get your votes in on the DC stuff, especially before it becomes you know the age of mostly Marvel. The MM age, as I like to call it, as I always do on this this podcast. Yes, uh, of course yeah. you do. Very consistent of you. Thank you. <laughs> no, and uh, eventually we'll get to the indie stuff. So, I mean, we've got the Dota and the Yu-Gi-Oh stuff coming up, the Lord of the Rings. And uh, whether we like it or not, whether Calder wants to or not, we will definitely be playing uh. with the Yu-Gi-Oh sets. Because man uh. oh man, whoever lands on Yu-Gi-Oh 3 with the Millennium Stone and all the resources, I I just can't wait to be completely slobber knockered by that resource. Vote for Exodia, I imagine, if it gets to to that set, right? I mean, I, my guess would be. Anyways, yeah, there's basically, Exodian guys, slipper. long story short, slipper if you're trying to dragon. understand what we're all talking about, I did a pretty poor social experiment, a very not super thought out one. It was just a social experiment to see how you guys would vote. I want you guys to take that same energy in voting and just saying what you like your favorite figures are and instead vote for them at Thursday Throwdown. Even if you don't watch them, you can do exactly what Jeff did and talk about how much he enjoyed these figures and why we also might find enjoyment out of them. Even if they aren't the best yeah. to make a team out of, like you don't have to, like we just say vote for figures you want to see in Thursday Throwdown. It doesn't have to be a figure that's like a crazy cool tentpole or a really good support piece or whatever. It can just be your favorite figure from the set. It's as simple as that. So and if we, get enough, if we get enough community response... Uh, I'll make Calder play with the Trek sets, mm. which was a bunch of ships uh, that don't really gosh. meld well with Hero Clicks. Uh, so if you want to see Calder playing some like Romulan battle cruisers or some Klingon warbirds or you know the USS uh, whatever, uh, <laughs> let me <laughs> make let me sure that you really can't make do me do anything. But uh, I mean, if we get enough people that want to see that. I could play some Star Trek. I get this is this is officially went from me going haha gotcha to like being very painful and feeling like a burning yeah. in my chest of the thought of having to play a figure with some word like a Starfleet keyword. Huh, huh. So gross. Sorry. Let me, let me look at. Uh, no, we're not looking at nothing. Star Trek, we're moving on. Star we're moving Trek on to community two. section. We're moving on to the community section. The we're not talking about any Star Trek for 150 tactics. points. We're not talking has about 11 this. attack, 17 defense. <laughs> Pretty solid for 150 points. 17 points. defense. Envil. Sweet. Envil. Wow. The, the best defense power. 
Anyways, a Jedi Legend Hero Clicks tip of the week. You don't want to sell me death sticks. I don't want to sell you death sticks. You want to go home and rethink your life. I want to go home and rethink my life. I'm really, really rethinking my life right now. He says, Brains and Bronze, Super Strength, is great for bashing heads, but you can also give a zero range character a range action with a minimum range of six. Uh, you can be tactical. Is that stealth friendly out in the open? Run up, deliver a soda machine to behind them, or just chuck an object and just kill someone. A heavy object does three damage when it's thrown. A light object does two damage when it's thrown. So it's pretty cool. He also has a little tiny spider flipping the sky over as his gif. He always has pretty fun gifts. If you don't follow Jedi Legend, go ahead, pop him a follow on the Twitters there. We also retweet uh, most of the time, I believe. We try to get a retweet out. Kind of depends. I kind of hate Twitter, I'm not going to lie. So we'll, we'll, we try to retweet him as much as possible. So yeah, uh, we also have a ton of questions. So before we jump into any you know specific question block, we actually have another set of Facebook questions. Simeon, do you want to pull those up or do you want me to pull those up? However yeah, from, from Chris Rizzi. Chris Rizzi says, Hey guys, with rotation happening and the new Fantastic Four set coming out, your thoughts. Question one is, do you think having a 300-point modern team is too restrictive? I think with bigger dials coming in, it's better to have maybe a 400-point limit. So, <clears throat> I do have a lot of thoughts on this. As okay. much as I hate 300 modern, I don't think there's anything wrong with different point values. So, I, I typically don't like 300-point modern because it just is too common so it's not to say that like I don't like the format as a whole. I just if there was a lot of options, I would like it probably equally. But it's like literally one of the few options that WizKids gives us for most con like for WKOs. Uh, correct. It's uh, 300 point modern or 300 sealed. So I don't have a problem with different point values, but unless restrictions are put into place, most of what we're going to see at higher point values are just going to be 300 point teams with like a hundred or 200 points of filler that makes them even better. So instead of seeing black widow with two captain Marvels, you're going to see black widow with two captain Marvels, a Steve Rogers. And I don't know, like a, a triple H that's a <laughs> Avenger. And all of a sudden your Chewies are doing like, I don't know, four damage or something. Uh, you'll see Medusa teams that have just, way more medusas so they get a ton of more free attacks you'll see right. uh just like i mean maybe even like uh more colossal retaliation and like resources played in like the golden age kind of setting so i do like that 300 point modern really makes you min max it i think 400 points lets you use those figures that are like 120 plus because I don't think anyone's afraid of throwing like a 100-point figure on a modern team. But to throw a 150, like 120 to 150-point figure on a team, they have to be really good. At 400 points, they don't have to be as good as long as they really fill in like a slot on your team. Like they, they really are like a solid main attacker with some support. Right. I have to basically agree along the same lines. I think 300 Modern, honestly, is fine the way it is. He mentions a lot of high point characters, and while yes, there are, uh, you can make an insanely competitive team and not have any of your figures go above like 75 points, to be honest with you, and I think that's fine. I, I think 300 points is fine. It's always been the norm, um, and I think 400 definitely flips it on its head. I believe we played 400 Modern, you know, yeah. like, uh, especially a few weeks ago when Unimind was still legal, right? A 275 Unimind is, instead of being a tent bolt, is now a team that can have some solid cosmic support, right? Like, it totally changes the landscape of things, you know? Uh, Dark Side, instead of being 200 points, he's only half your yeah. build instead of two thirds your build, right? Like, it changes a lot. And I actually. And he's not unique, mind. so you can just play and two. And he's not unique, so you could just play two. I don't know if I would recommend that, but you could. So, like, it changes, like, the entire format, right? Adding that extra 100 points completely, like, shifts the entire thing. I think 300-point modern is fine the way it is. There's enough different teams, not a ton of different teams. People people like to say it's super diverse, uh, not as diverse as it could be, just because it's, like, the same, you know, 50 or so figures you kind of see pop up. Yeah. You know? It's but definitely a way, bit max kind of situation. Um, totally. Into. A secondary point on that, WizKids 
point cost their figures in a 300 point setting. Yeah. So when you increase it to like four or 500, WizKids like point for- formula, whatever the heck they use, I don't really know. Um, whatever it is that they're using for their point formula, all of a sudden like a 15 point perplex piece on a 300 point team where you'd only fit like maybe like three or four on with like your, your big hitter all of a sudden, like you can fit six or seven on. And so you're just never going to miss an attack because you know, you can fit all those cheap support powers that they costed for a 300 point team. You can fit them on a 400 point team now. So question number two, he says, in your opinion, why is there such a disconnect to using older retired pieces and major events? It's reusing product that we all have that just sits in boxes. So my response to this is, I think I don't think there's a disconnect, to be honest. I think it is just purely um, WizKids needs to keep selling product to stay in business. They make no money off of secondary sales, and they make no money off of like third-party sales. They make no money off of uh, retired figures, period. So whether it's in the form of like going forward and um, putting forward like no support for like Golden Age, which WizKids doesn't really, uh, or if it's just making every new set slightly better than like previous sets, that's like what they have to do to sell the product. So it's either mm-hmm. it's either you know they keep rotating stuff and they don't support golden. And so people have to buy the modern stuff to compete in modern, or they have to make the the modern sets better to keep people from like keep people buying new stuff so that they can keep selling it. Um, and so like those two things combined just keeps Wiz like Hero Clicks in general, uh, WizKids and Hero Clicks in general moving forward constantly because. Uh, not only are like your older figures getting slightly worse, like maybe not as good as powers. Like, so like Trelane for 50 points, isn't as good as Q for 30 points for like the, almost the same thing. Um, and that was only about a year separation between the two. So whether it's between like doing stuff like that, just making figures cheaper, more point cost effective or giving them better stats and better powers or just completely, putting like a kibosh on golden age by not running any of uh, like official events in golden age. Right. Um, whiz kids has to do that to maintain some sort of sales. And so I'm fine with them doing that. I understand it. Um, now if they really wanted to like start like a legacy kind of league thing, I, I think that like they wouldn't really be able to get away from their current set of like, increasing the power level every year or so because otherwise i mean why why bother going for like a black widow that can spit out black widow recruits when you can just run despotelis for less points and do like the same kind of thing uh yeah mm-hmm. you know i kind of agree i have written down uh WizKids just wants to make that dolly all so that's that's really it that's what it comes down to uh, golden age doesn't make WizKids any money now I wouldn't mind seeing the ROC uh, make a Bronze Age. I know they had they used to do Rock Age. They don't really do that anymore. I didn't like Rock Age. Uh, it gave me enough Golden Age to make me want to play, but not enough to where I'd be like, yeah, this is Golden Age. I I don't like this start from Aurea dials. I disliked that. I I want to play some of them flat dials type deal. WizKids isn't going to do Golden Age. doesn't make them money, um, but I wouldn't mind seeing Rock do Rock Age again. Where, you know, because Rock does the state tournaments, right? So they do 300 modern state tournaments or they do 300 modern popper state tournaments. I would like to see Golden would be awesome. If you want your Golden fix, sadly, it is pretty much just Majestics that does high level competitive Golden Age, Bronze Age, what they call it, tournaments. But that is sadly pretty much locked to the West Coast of America. Also, yeah. I think that we'll get into it in like uh, question number three here, but Golden Age as a whole, um, because WizKids is always going to like increase the power level just a little bit so that you're constantly buying new stuff, Golden Age as a whole will never quite be as good as the newest stuff, except because like older resources and relics and uh, like sideline kind of items, like ID cards, uh, retaliation. That kind yeah, of thing will things. be like, yeah. So 
so I think like I don't remember the last time I looked at like Majestic's Golden Age, and this was several years ago because the Deadpool set was fairly new. It was a Mistress Death team with the Book of the Skulls from Fear itself on it, so like you could get some free quakes off. And so it wasn't really Golden Age; it was modern stuff with the most broken Golden Age elements. Mm. So it was still modern figures, but. Uh, and that's I, what I think it would eventually be if WizKids did sponsor something. It would just be modern figures with broken, older, golden age elements that like are exploitable because uh, the wording was different. So in question three, Chris Rizzi says, Do you think that doing something with older figures like updating dials and powers would be something to look into? Example, like an X, like the X-Wing game coming out with the 2.0, they updated the rules and abilities of the ships to make everything forward. So this would take a huge undertaking from WizKids, which, just to be honest, is not going to make them any money to like go back in time and like look at all these older figures and update them to new rules and wordings and point values and anything else they want to errata. It's not going to make them any money to do all that work. And WizKids is not a huge company, to be honest. They don't have, I don't, I honestly don't think they have enough manpower to do it. Um, especially if you want them to keep making newer figures and like cool new sets and figures that we, we've never seen and like figures we haven't had in a long time. If they dedicated like half their staff to going back in time and uh, refreshing some like, super old golden age pre-carded era stuff then sure they could probably do it but i don't really want them to do that i'd like i'd prefer that we get some uh some venom to angelos or whatever it is we're gonna get coming up uh so i i said to this uh unless they made all rotated figures they gave them like some sort of like across the line plus one stat to all their combat values and they started retroactively giving out stop clicks and special powers, I don't see it happening. I think modern stuff would still beat out whatever Golden Age stuff you could find, even with those plus values and stop clicks. Uh, I think Golden Age is still fine and casual. I still play Golden Age and casual uh, all the time. Um, But if you go back too far, there really isn't anything WizKids could do without fully breaking or fully revamping sets. So there's not like a single fix that they could do across the board that would be easy, in my opinion. And if they did, it would just make some figures way too good. Or it would literally take them fully going through a set and completely redoing it. And again, it doesn't make WizKids any money to do that, so... Wow, I, I'm, I glad, I'm glad their... you, you said that for three minutes. Uh, yeah, <laughs> I'm sorry. That was good. No, that was good. It was actually well thought out. It was probably more interesting than what I'm going to say. I obviously am going to once again agree. I would love to see them go through and make rules changes. There's a lot of figures that work off of specifically how Mastermind used to work, how Regen used to work, uh, other powers. I could name a bunch, right? Those are the two that came to mind. Leadership, um, yeah. Leadership, stuff like that, right? Mind powers, control, yeah. There's a lot, don't... yeah fundamentally work the same as like how they used to because they're changed they're not the same um i wouldn't mind duo characters being reworked duo characters should be a lot better than they are with the split merge all this stuff there's a way to make duo characters work more fluidly that they can easily do but they totally abandon that mechanic it's gone now so it's not in the current game it's a golden age rule there are several golden age rules that need to be reworked uh there's no team base that has the up-to-date team base rules printed on its card you know that bothers me like there's none in existence so if you play a team base like ah, oh, i think it does this it doesn't you have to go you know check all this other stuff before you can actually play your golden age team base i would love it if WizKids kids change them once again it doesn't make them any money so they're not going to do it they're a small team and i would i would once again i agree with simian rather have them put their best efforts into making good, clean, non-broken, usable, solid figures in upcoming sets, then fix uh, all their Golden Age mistakes, to be completely yeah. honest. And that's coming from someone who loves Golden Age. I would rather play Golden Age every day for the rest of my life and never play through Ninja Modern ever again. Yeah, I'd rather so. use the, my my uh, Galactic Guardians Galactus a hundred times than use the new one once. But... I'm still going to get the new one because he's cool and he's different and yes. his, he's got a swappable head. So, I mean, come on. I want the flaming eyes. All right. 
that ends it for the questions from Chris Wizzy. Yeah. But uh, Thank we you appreciate for sending those in. And uh, all of you listening, you can send us questions to the Facebook page, the Twitter page, uh, the Dial H for HeroClicks email, which is something. At gmail.com. Just Dial H for HeroClicks at gmail.com. All spelled yeah. out. Very simple. Or if you just find me or Calder on Facebook, uh, we also have Messenger, so you can just do it that way. Yeah, if, if you want to be so forward some, and bold. Some weird, some weird guy that contacts me directly, uh, I really won't care. I, I have nothing either. going on. Yeah, I have zero friends on Facebook. Hmm. I just wanted that to sit there for a while. It's Because it's true. Anyways, I have several in real life. On. I promise. Never, no Several. real friends that are on Facebook, though. Uh, moving on, we have another question, no, another set of questions that is going to be, I can't talk today. Goodness gracious. A Malcolm Rush question block. Jeez. Japan? Woo. Japan? No, 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 no. I can't go to Japan. I'm not hearing myself back through my mic like I normally do, so it's really freaking me out, and I am, like, tripping up myself all over. Malcolm Rush, uh, hard to believe that we're already halfway through 2020. Most will agree 2020 isn't turning out the year they thought it would be. So let's take a look forward to 2021. First question is going to be, what Heroclix sets do you want WizKids to make for 2021? And I'll, I'll pair it with question two, which is, what Heroclix figures do you want in those sets? Since Simi had answered his uh, first, I'll, I'll go ahead and answer these first. More than anything, I want a DC Colossal Booster set. That would be awesome. Uh, specifically, I want to see Green Lanterns in it. Any any Lanterns, really, but Green Lanterns more so. So I want to see a mech Kyle. Kyle makes a kind of Japanese-inspired mech in a few comics. I want that. I want to see a fighter jet Hal Jordan, like a vehicle-type deal. I think that'd be cool. And then I want to see a monster truck Guy Gardner, for sure. Like, those are, if you make a DC Colossal Booster set, those are the Lanterns I want to see. Some green translucent plastic... And the little dude in there, I think it would be awesome. I think it would be great. Sure. Uh, they could sculpt or use the little guy. So Yeah, yeah. I, I'm totally fine with that. Uh, other figures I would like to see would be... Other sets I would like to see would be an Undead 2. Probably not going to happen, but I'd love an Undead 2. And I think a Static Shock Gravity Feed would be really cool. Mm, yeah. Uh, so, Simeon, what, what sets do you want them to make next year for 2021? So, what figures do you want to see in them? I went fairly broad. Um... So I just said any indie set, whether that's more WWE, whether it's like uh, they make their D&D miniatures have dials, which I think would be really cool. Another uh, Rest in Peace set, Undead set, that'd be really cool. Anything like that. And for figures out of that, uh, literally anything. Um, except if it's WWE, I would like them to somehow get the rights to Orange Cassidy uh, for some freshly squeezed Orange Cassidy uh That'd be pretty cool. Um, <laughs> hands and pockets, glasses on. Uh, maybe like a rage dial where his glasses get mm. knocked off. Uh, other than that, I'd like a Teen Titans or like a Harley Quinn animated set. So I've recently started watching the Harley Quinn animated series, which I'm a little behind on because it's. I think it's on like season two or three now. I'm still on season one, but it's really well done. Uh, DC has always knocked it out of the park when it comes to animation. Uh, the Teen Titans set or Teen Titans, uh, cartoon was like years ago now, but, uh, we still haven't gotten like a full Teen Titans, like from that kind of style of animation. And that'd be really cool. And they could finish out while they're doing those animated sets, they could finish out the Batman, beyond stuff because for some reason they sprinkled it in without giving us a full set and at this point there's no reason to give us a full set because we've gotten so much of it that it would be kind of weird to get a full set of it all the revamps when we've already got several of them um i'd like to get from marvel i guess a future foundation set of the fantastic four with uh all of the people from the future foundation i mean they're like the Valerie, the, the kids, the Dragon Man, all the stuff that goes on in that, uh, the Johnny with the cosmic rod, all that kind of stuff. And then a full Age of Apocalypse set, because if we're going to do the 20th X-Men set, we might as well do a cool storyline and give us like one of every character that showed up in it, because they were all 
like without exception, they were all like a different and interesting version of themselves if they survived the age of apocalypse. So that's all I've yeah, that's all I've got for Marvel. All right. Cool. We'll go into question three. Question three, if 2021 cons are back, who knows? Which cons for 2021 do you want Whiskey to make? So these are like con exclusives, uh, convention uh, LEs. So I kind of split it as like what single figure I want. Uh, something that felt left out of the Captain America set, besides the majority of what I wanted in the Captain America set, is Cap as Nomad, I think would be very fitting for a convention exclusive figure. It's an alternate take on a normal character. We've seen that before. Or, of course, a Fear Itself Captain America, either with guns or with the hammer. I won't be picky. I would prefer probably guns, since we have several uh, Captain America with Mjolnir. So I think that would be awesome. I love Fear Itself. That was huge to me. I would also really like to see if they do single figures for WWE, I'd like to see an Ultimate Warrior. If they if we don't ever get him in a main set, I would love an Ultimate Warrior. Like, any way we can get it. Uh, as far as a convention exclusive, that would be more along the lines of the Superman Muhammad Ali boxing ring. I would like a Matt Riddle versus Tim Timothy Thatcher death pit set. If you didn't watch that on NXT, I think about a month ago now, it is a great match. I really enjoy it. It's basically where uh, the ring is the WWE ring is the lowest spot in the whole arena. And then around it, surrounding it is a raised platform and the ring has like a chain link fence around it. Kind of like what they use for like uh, schools and parks and stuff. And then the raised platform, they like, they threw each other off of it. It was pretty cool. I wouldn't mind uh, a death pit type. Uh, I don't know. I forget what those are called. The thing you put on the map. I don't know. I don't know. Special terrain. Goodness terrain. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Terrain. So that was those are my choices for con uh, Ellie's Simeon. So I I kind of went along the same route um, with like special terrain and stuff. Um, I think that they honestly should release a like just like they do fast forces and starter sets with like six or five figures or whatever. I think they should release a WWE retroactive uh, item like pack where figures that they've already released get their like special items. And it'll be like, if you're playing X figure from like the previous set, like triple H, for example, if you're playing like a triple H, you can start the game with this sledgehammer for free. Um, and I don't, I don't know what they would do, but, uh, just give them like, you know, three points and like a plus one damage or something. Uh, that's just a light object. I don't know. Give them, give them something, something interesting. Uh, for 2020 con LEs, I put down Barbados. That's colossal because if you read the Dark Metal or like the the Metal comic series, Barbados deserved more than a 11 click long dial. He should have been a colossal in my opinion. He should have done more with the Dark Knights than he did in my opinion. Um, what he did was cool, but wasn't enough. I think they should bring back the anti-monitor similar to how they're doing a Galactus. So maybe as a con exclusive, do either monitor or anti-monitor as a 2x2. Cage match terrain for WWE. Cage matches are huge. Hell in the Cell Mm. is huge. Those are big, cool matches. Uh, Elimination Chamber. There's tons of terrain kind of style stuff that could go in besides the just the ring. And it'd be really cool if we could get one of those. Maybe it even like works with the ring somehow. But um, just like a uh, hell in the cell that just like clicks on top of the ring, I'd be fine with that if it just like it's like in lieu of using the WWE ring abilities. Like this is what you use instead. Um, WWE vehicles. Uh, the Undertaker used a chopper for a decent while. Um, a lot of people, their ring entrances were vehicle based. We did get a Stone Cold that uses like the ATV as like a special mm. charge power. Yeah. But it'd be really cool to just get a Stone Cold on an ATV or just like those vehicles in general. And honestly, you can just release ATV. No one owns the rights to the word all terrain vehicle. So just like Dune Buggy, you can release it in any kind of set, in any kind of way. And then uh, the biggest one for me is the 10 million BC Phoenix. The only figure that we're missing from the 10 million BC uh, Avengers is the Phoenix. And uh, we had a set that had two Phoenixes in it and had primes. And they so super had an opportunity to 
triple up on like the Phoenixes and they just didn't do it for some reason. It would have been really cool to get a 10 million BC Phoenix. So it's time. It's time. Let's do it. It's time. All right. Fantastic. It's time for question four, which in 2021, how was the game of Heroclix going to change because of the events in 2020? Uh, I don't know if you were expecting some apocalyptic Mad Max answer uh, to this question or the following questions. Um, I said I really don't think much. Uh, more online, I guess. That's it. That's all, I, that's all I really got for question four. Yeah, I put more online. Stores will probably continue some sort of social distancing and uh, safety practices like that. Um, if things get real bad, I guess we'll use bottle caps as action tokens. Of course. Because yeah. they're yeah. everywhere. They're, they're going to be everywhere. I'm just going to start stocking up and th- locking them in safes and keeping pockets full of them. So, yeah. just, you know, no reason, really. I, I'm going to uh, carry a bunch of pre-war money on me when it's got zero value in the apocalypse world. Good idea. Good idea. Uh, so I, I need to keep just rolls of duct tape, too. As much glue and duct tape I can fit on my person. Electric yeah, tape, yeah, specifically. Yeah. Screws. Uh, they're apparently yeah, hard to come by. Pockets full of screws, yeah. Uh, what is your prediction for 2021 Hero Clicks? Uh, I said, I think some sets are going to come out. Uh, I think some tournaments will happen. I think we'll get some <laughs> LE figures with reused sculpts and one new sculpt. That's what I think 2021 Hero Clicks is going to be. Yeah. Uh, 2021, I honestly don't know. I'm always excited to see what they're going to do. I think with Galactus coming back this year, maybe they'll see like how big of like a fan call out there was and like how many people pre-ordered and stuff. And they'll bring back like a Fing Fang Foom, a Serpent, Necron, Animoner, something. Uh, maybe a John Osterman, a big old Colossal would oh, be my guess. But if we get other Watchmen than that, in 2021, pff, oh, I'd be over the moon. I, I could, jeez, that'd be awesome. Yeah. I'd, I'd be willing to to drop any animated set for a Doomsday Clock set. Uh, to mm-hmm. be honest, um, a Doomsday yeah. Clock slash Watchmen HBO series. Just like if we need to fill out more of the set, by all means, let's use whatever we got before Watchmen, after Watchmen. I don't care. Let's, let's fill out as much of this Watchmen set. If we can get a full booster Watchmen set. Uh, it'd, be, it'd be so great. <laughs> all right, uh, number six is going to be uh, what hope. Do you have for 2021? I mean, I think it'll. I think it'll happen. I don't. You. I. The world isn't ending. Uh, it's just whatever. You know. I don't really want to get into too much of this talk, but I'm just like the years. Just the planet's going to keep on spinning, and I'm just going to keep on rolling dice as soon as I can roll dice again. I think in about three or so months I'll be rolling dice, and then that same thing will just keep happening for the rest of the year for 2021. Yeah. I don't. I don't really have any deep dark things to think about or say i just i think it's gonna be whatever well, I'll, I'll take over for uh, the deep dark things oh uh, i don't though so don't in response that. for what hope do i have for 2021 uh i don't i i have zero hope for 2021 at this point i don't know if it's ever going to come i think we might permanently be stuck in this purgatory known as 2020 and uh no no i'm just kidding um to be honest my hope for 2021 is mostly podcast related. I hope that I'm still here. Calder's still here. I hope that we're still bringing people content and people are still enjoying it. Um, I hope WizKids comes out with the the first ever like Shonen or Sign-In set. I hope that they get some anime in to bring in that whole section of nerds that haven't come to the our, our great game yet. Um, yes. I hope there's more WWE and I hope there's two DC sets a year. Uh, or something along those lines, and that's my that's my true hero clicks answer. I hope yeah. that uh, you know, I hope good things happen, things that uh, the right. whole community can enjoy. Yeah, I mean, as far as like hopes goes, I mean, there's a bunch of figures I still want hero clicks to make or whiskets to make. Blah 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 blah. Really, what I what I want more than anything is I want them to invest in a webcam for that gentleman. Get him a very nice <laughs> webcam, uh, one, one that's, that's not so me. grainy. Yeah, it's not grainy. Um, I, I'm gonna be you know? honest with you. Uh, looking at cameras, I've I've never once seen a camera that could overheat in like eight hours. 
or less. Yeah. I, I don't know what it was that he was using or like what kind of function it was doing that caused it to overheat so easily at last year worlds. But man, yeah. uh, when your, your whole, your whole like build up to like the biggest selling game that you guys sell of the year at your biggest event of the year, I'd be willing to say, uh, probably and your, your, probably. your webcam overheats for it. I don't understand. Have, have just buy another one. Whatever it is. I, I might two. just try Swap to live out. stream this weekend for 12 hours, 8 hours, whatever it is. See what happens. See what happens to my t- like $30 Walmart webcam. So just, just, just curiosity. See if I'll kill the cat. Anyways, that is this episode of Dial H for Heroclix. I want to thank all of you amazing listeners, beautiful people that joined us and listened to us. Even if you don't support us anywhere else, the fact that you listen is truly enough. Tell your friends if you enjoy the show. Tell them about it. By all means, you can find us on Podbean, iTunes, Stitcher, and Spotify. Ooh, ah, how cool is that? And pretty much wherever podcasts are found, because Podbean also just kind of throws it out to all these random apps that like pick it up yeah. for whatever reason. I think too, at this so. point, if you can't find it on like the, the app that you're using, at this point, you need to find a better app, to be honest. I would agree. I, I'm not trying to be elitist here, but uh, if you're not on like, I mean, if you're using like SoundCloud, or something for podcasts like what why what are you doing we're not on soundcloud i don't think maybe we were we were for a hot okay. minute so i found <laughs> out we had to also pay for soundcloud and i'm like i can't justify 25 dollars just for soundcloud a month you know yeah we have like three episodes up on soundcloud i could go i could go look but like you you get a limit you're only allowed so many like minutes or gigabytes like something i don't know so like after a while it's like oh i can't upload until i pay money well yeah, and we're not, not with professional rappers, so no. it's not like we're bringing in I'm tons no, of money. I'm no SoundCloud rapper. I could barely sing, barely carry a tune in a bucket. So yeah. check us out on all those platforms. We also are on YouTube. I do, you know, semi-fun in my level of humor. I think they're fun. Unboxings, as well as we do Thursday Throwdown every single Thursday. I think I'm going to start doing them as premieres. So I will, at the very least, be in the chat when the Thursday third on video premieres, so it, it'll premiere live and you'll watch it and you can talk in the chat. None of the comments are saved forever. So say whatever you want. I don't care. Um, just, you know, if it wouldn't make your mom upset, maybe don't say it in the chat. So basically I, I want to keep doing those premieres. That was pretty fun. I just said it as premiere. I didn't even know what that meant. Honestly, when I said it the first time and I like, I stopped in, I'm like, Oh, the video's live. That's cool. People are talking. All right, neat. So I might jump in the chat every time we do a Thursday throwdown. If you want to watch it live with us, that's one way you can do it. It's it's pretty cool. If you support us on Patreon, you also get access to our Discord server, which is pretty cool. Pretty fun, might I add. You can find us on Twitter, Facebook, and all sorts of fun social medias like that. And like I said, email us at dialhforheroclux at gmail.com. That's all I have to say. Thank you guys so much for listening. Simeon, any last words? Slash, go ahead and read us out of here. Yeah. Uh, I mean, we're, we're going to be doing more stuff on the YouTubes. Uh, I just said I said that um, we're gonna be doing more stuff on the YouTube thing as uh, as we get there. It's just taking a little bit, but uh, we'll we'll have more content coming. It'll be better, more more edited as I get there with the uh, quality of knowledge that I have. Um, but that's yeah, that's it. Uh, check it out. It's not super well done, but man it is it's fun to listen to at the very least i imagine um so with that i'll just say that uh star sapphire number 061 from the dc justice unlimited set she's a super rare if you haven't picked one up and man you were really wanting to fill out your star sapphire team she's only 16 bucks currently on coolstuffinc.com mm. who happens to sponsor us we are brought to you by coolstuffinc.com and they happen to have cool stuff in stock every day. From the latest HeroClix singles and sealed products, like I just mentioned, to, uh, you know, to the pre-orders that you can do and all the fun stuff that you can you can wait a little bit on. Uh, so, yeah, check them out at CoolStuffInc.com. Happy trails. Mut, 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 mut,